2010, April 20th. Go for Mexico. Deepwater Horizon, oil spill. This selection of NOAA's map shows how the oil moved around. The red dots are representing reports made by Gulf Coast residents. Why is it moving this way? It is following the wind, surface currents and waves. But let's get closer. The oil is not moving uniformly, it is not a simple blob. Oil on the surface stretches in long strips drifting down the wind, following surface currents and waves. Currently BP is either spraying toxic dispersant, conducting controlled burns or using repurposed fishing boats as skimmers. The orange boom contains the oil and the white boom absorbs the oil. Despite the efforts of hundreds of skimmers, we could only skim 3% of the oil, exposing the life of cleaners to high levels of toxic. Why could such little oil be collected? Say, we have an oil spill, out of control. We send skimmers which basically trace a clean line into complex stretches of oil. With the same lens of boom, we can make a straight line. Moving upwind, we can intercept a lot more oil. Many have criticized oil absorbing boom for not collecting all the oil at one time. So if we multiply the rig and move up the wind, we may do better. Now it is very difficult to move such a large object against the wind, current and waves. What if we sail upwind, pulling a long absorbing tail, intercepting a lot of oil in the successive folds, using the force of nature to collect the oil spill. If we apply a constant pull to the tail, we'll avoid the entanglement that takes place when the booms are on the loose. All booms can absorb up to 25 times their own weight in oil. Booms are well-established technology that will be cheap and easy to implement. Prote, a fleet of oil collecting sailing drones. First of all, we need to make sure a tail will work, so we just took a little sailboat on the lake and sailed up the wind dragging this long tail. It worked out. But the longer the tail, the harder it was to control the direction and we ended up going very slow. Why is that? You need the basics of boat design to understand why. A simple hull, add a sail. Determine the center of gravity. The center of boat goes right under to oppose the wind pushing on the sail. Finally, we add the rudder. Here you go, you have a nice sailboat ready to sail. The center of board acts as a center of rotation moving pretty freely, but if you had a long heavy tail, it becomes difficult to steer the boat because it's heavy. What if steering was at the front? Would it make it easier to steer? Hmm, we have to try. So we made Prote number one, a remotely controlled sailboat with front steering, pulling a very long tail. Prote zero one, with a 14 cm rudder could steer a 400 cm tail, that means a very small force control a very large object, just what we need. Stable, extremely maneuverable, very much like a car with a front steering. Yeah, a car, like a sports car. But what if it was more like a four-wheel drive? A rudder at the front and another at the back, and maybe a third, one or the fourth. What if the whole sailboat was articulated? And that's protein number two, entirely articulated. Rugged, one piece, flexible body, two sail, excellent control, powerful, fast. Now, what's so special about Prote 02 is its capacity to tack upwind while catching wind from both sides. Yes, this is revolutionary and made possible because the whole body bends. The major advantage of this is that we constantly have pulling power and control, even if we are facing the wind. Prote 02 was good, but we needed to go further and improve the system. Based on the same principles, we made Prote number 3. Large and inflatable, 6 meters high, 4 meters long, made of rudimentary DIY plastic sheets, put together and inflated. 
extremely light with a large sail surface. Flotte 3 has a great pulling potential. We want to develop more iteration until we have a semi-autonomous drone, inflated with air for the sail, water for the immersed part of the body, sand for the ballast at the bottom. Prote will be inflatable and articulated. The mechanics will be pretty simple. Prote only requires one motor for the overall shape and one motor for the sails. Simple electronics and sensors, long-range communication could be affordable. I affectionately call Prote the ocean blimp. The tail or payload could be pretty much anything, but for all recovery, Prote presents numerous advantages compared to existing technologies. Unmanned, it does the work by itself, collecting oil and going back to land without exposing human health to toxic. Inflatable and articulated, it is light, powerful and collision safe. self writing and unsinkable, it is hurricane ready and has a great autonomy. Upwind sailing, it can pull a long, heavy payload upwind and intercept oil. Low cost green. It does not consume oil like powerboats and it can operate night and day using natural forces to collect the oil. The idea is to produce prote cheap enough so we can have many of them running simultaneously as a swarm. The fleet could either run adaptative patterns to collect oil depending on the wind, the currents and the waves, or it could be driven remotely by people on the coast. Prote is developed as open hardware, which means it is developed faster, cheaper, it is peer-reviewed and most importantly, it is more fun. All spills are happening everywhere, all the time. It is not about asking ourselves if another oil spill will happen, but when and where it will happen. Open hardware enables local population of the world to adapt the technology to suit their needs. Everyone is welcome to use, modify, produce and redistribute the design and manufacturing process of Prote. You can participate in the development of Prote. Prote.org